pleased to introduce uh, Austin Fuller with Moving Farther Faster Now and Into the Future with our roadmap. Take it away, Austin. Thanks, Matt. So uh, while I get ready here, uh, I'm Austin Fuller. I'm Product Marketing Director here at Kion, and uh, welcome back from the break. And we're going to be talking about you and the evolution of cloud enablement now and into the future. And maybe we'll find a few surprises and exciting announcements uh, along the way. So our mission is to make it simpler and easier for organizations to achieve the benefits of the cloud by empowering their people to move faster, uh, to move farther and faster, to transform their business. You've probably seen or heard that statement many times. We heard uh, Brian Price, our CEO, mention it today in his session, but it is our North Star driving everything we do in Kion. And from our inception, Kion has tackled big problems in the cloud, from working with AWS to achieve cloud at scale all the way back in 2015, to the present, where we're working to deliver a single platform for cloud management and governance, financial management, and continuous compliance across multiple cloud providers. In other words, full cloud enablement. But what is cloud enablement? What does it look like? Cloud enablement is a paradigm shift to how you view the cloud, both literally and philosophically. Cloud enablement means everyone working in the cloud, regardless of their job function, role, or permissions, spends time accomplishing meaningful work and making an impact. Uh, it's a fundamentally different approach that restores consistency and control while improving the enterprise cloud experience for all the users and stakeholders. It brings together you know, buttons that need to be pushed to perform actions and the set of rules that allow those actions to be performed with automation and confidence that they're safe and compliant. And it shifts people from spending their time on the grunt work that we've talked about of managing and governing their cloud to performing meaningful work that will transform the organization. And one of the most powerful things about cloud enablement is it gives people context. Context to make informed decisions and do what they need to do. A good example of this, uh, when you look holistically at a cloud environment, would be how do you know a uh, spike in spending? Is your engineers leaving something on versus malicious activity because someone checked in access keys to a public GitHub repo? The context you need changes based on your role and what you're working on. But what you all know really well is the battle against cloud minutia is a difficult one. Here are the top challenges for all organizations from the Flexera 2022 State of the Cloud Report. And if you look closely, you'll see security, lack of resources and expertise, cloud spend, all the usual suspects are here. Something to note is there isn't any response lower than 71%. So the majority of the respondents in the survey are experiencing these challenges. Many of the challenges could even be at the same time. All I can say about that is, Perhaps we haven't introduced enough of them to Kion. There are these are really complicated and difficult problems, especially since they're not each happening in a vacuum. Fortunately, we're you're not alone in experiencing uh, if you're experiencing some or many of these problems. But we want to not only eliminate the tedium that comes with the cloud, but tackle some of these difficult problems to enable you to accomplish the vision of what you have for the cloud. And to do that, we need to understand collectively as an industry, not only where we are today, but where we are going. What stops us from doing what we want to do in the cloud? And what could we do if those obstacles were removed? Let's take a look. As we look to where the industry is headed, two distinct trends emerge by looking across our customers, prospects, and the market as a whole. First is the use of multiple public cloud providers. And the second one is growing adoption in Google Cloud. So let's dig in a little bit more. After analyzing a, a number of reports from popular publications like the aforementioned report uh, from Flexera and intricately, it's no surprise to see a growth in organizations looking to go multi-cloud. While many CSPs offer competing services, the real drive from what we've seen is specialized services across cloud provider managed services that drive to the need to look beyond a single cloud service provider. Obviously for us as a multi-cloud tool, 
This strengthens the need for unified reporting, centralized access control, and a unified guardrail and compliance strategy across CSPs. Here's an example. Uh, as we look at the growth of different workloads across providers, uh, one particularly interesting figure is in yellow. Uh, that's the percentage of orgs experimenting with, with workloads in a certain cloud provider. And, and, and the percentage that it attributes to their growth. And while we see 22% of the growth of Google Cloud in this report comes from that source. And we can verify and validate this within our own customer base. Specifically, one of the trends we've seen is working with our newer higher education customers to ensure they've got Google Cloud configured in their environment. And I wanna spend a moment on this because I think it's an excellent microcosm for what's happening in the market at large. In higher education, there's two specific workload types that exist in general. First is the normal IT operations of the university, most of which we see running in AWS. And then there's the research workloads, most of which we see running within Google Cloud. And we've attributed this to a number of Google services that are aligned specifically uh, to uh, more services focused on data analysis, data management, artificial intelligence and machine learning, all of those uh, that are heavily leveraged in the research community. And while we're seeing uh, huge growth in Google Cloud, the interesting aspect is that AWS and Microsoft are also growing at the same time. And so this shows us signs of larger market adoption versus workloads just being moved from one provider to another. And Gartner even predicts that cloud services will come close to $500 billion this year alone. Now, that number is a really large number. That includes things like infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. There's a lot of, of different items in that report, but I think it does speak to the rate at which uh, organizations are adopting the cloud and how fast spend is increasing. If you attended our last Cloud Unity in 2021, we spent a lot of time talking about newer features that we were beginning to develop for Google Cloud. And I'm really proud to say that since August 2021 alone, we've had 51 releases of our platform across eight major releases. And of that, 96 uh, features have been specific to our Google Cloud support. And in the next week, we'll be releasing our version 3.4 with even more Google features to help support our customers and the market with their growing needs for managing, governing, and ultimately enabling their Google Cloud environment. So a quick recap of everything we've covered. Cloud enablement is fundamentally a new way of approaching the cloud. Our mission at Kion is to make it easier for you to achieve the benefits of the cloud. And we find that cloud enablement is achieved by delivering automation, proactive guardrails, and context through a single platform for all users and stakeholders to accomplish meaningful work. And then the two industry trends we're looking at is the use of multiple public cloud providers and growing adoption in Google Cloud. That leads us to our roadmap. How are we going to adopt, uh, adapt and help you to take advantage of, of where the industry is going? If you attended our last Cloud Unity uh, back in 2021, we spent a lot of time talking about the newer features we were beginning to develop for Google Cloud. As I mentioned, 96 of those features uh, were specific for Google Cloud support. And in the coming weeks, we're releasing even more. So we're excited to announce that many of the things, uh, many of the features and functionality in Kion that you already enjoy in AWS and Azure will soon be coming to Google Cloud. This is features like compliance jumpstarts, preventative roles, and webhook support, and more. Let's talk Kubernetes for a second. Who doesn't love Kubernetes? In the last Cloud Unity, we previewed, uh, we were supporting more Kubernetes-based deployments for Kion. And now we're hearing that customers want the ability to get better control and visibility into the applications that run inside their Kubernetes clusters. We wanna help give you a complete picture of what your application footprint looks like when using Kubernetes in a containerized deployment. For example, if you have main compute clusters deployed across, uh, across Kubernetes, but facial recognition services are used in Amazon, how do you get a complete picture of what everything is costing you? To answer that question and others like it, we want to bring the same financial context that you have with other services in Kion to Kubernetes through Kubernetes cost reporting. 
Next, we have labels with actions. So we want to make labels more than simply metadata and reporting. And we've heard from our customers that they love the power that cloud rules provide. Today, they're applied hierarchically. We've previewed more, a more nascent concept of this feature at our last Cloud Unity. And today, we're announcing labels with actions, which allows even, uh, even further customized provisioning, particularly around preventative and responsive controls. Here's an example. So let's say you have an amount of production workloads intermixed with dev and test environments. You've built an organization structure that aligns them with business unit and division, but you know that all your production workloads must have a set of infrastructure deployed. With labels with actions, we make this process even simpler. Custom cloud rules can now be automatically ap applied across projects that are labeled a certain way. So if you apply the production label to a project, it will apply the applicable cloud rules. All right, now let's jump into flexible funding models. Uh, we've, we've heard from customers a desire for more flexible funding models. And, and we understand that the rigidity of funding sources as they exist in Kion today is great for many of our customers. But as we look at use cases in the market and with our own customer base, where there's growing adoption with Google Cloud and running different service inside, services inside of different cloud service providers, there's a growing demand and use case for less rigid financial requirements. The reality is that some projects do have specific sources of funding with fixed amounts, dates, and times, while other projects may only be partially budgeted for individual workloads, and some may not be budgeted at all. So that's why we're going to introduce budgets for projects. At a, at a high level, budgets allow users to set a budget at a project level or a threshold at an OU level. You can display a budget to how you need to see it, whether that's monthly or you can even set a custom time frame. You'll also be able to continue to use enforcements as you do today. Some key differences include that budgets can be optional and be more granular about how much you will spend monthly. Another difference is that currently projects must include the full history of spending and funding sources for that project. With budgets, you can break up each budget by time frame. And uh, let's talk about allocation mode for a second. Because allocation mode is a new feature in budgets. With allocation mode on, users must use funding sources and distribute funds throughout the hierarchy. With allocation mode off, organizations can choose a less restrictive way of setting up their financials. Organizations can decide whether they want to use OU thresholds, funding sources, and whether budgets are necessary for some, all, or none of their projects. But what about funding sources? You can continue to use funding sources in Kion, but you simply have added flexibility. Your organization can choose whether uh, they want to enforce the use of funding sources for project budgets or not. When allocation mode is off, you have the option to set a total amount for a funding source or simply associate a funding source to budgets and have the amount accumulate. For many of our current customers, our original use case for funding sources is still valid. We're simply addressing a growing use case in the market to have the option to select a more flexible funding model if it fits your organization. You can continue to operate Kai on status quo as you know and love it today, but this is also an option to anyone that would like a more flexible model. All right, transitioning away from finances now, and I want to talk a little bit about vision, how you see the cloud. And today in Kion, you view your cloud at a very high level and is contained in uh, OUs and projects that you define. We all love the organizational chart, but as we see the industry operating within multiple cloud providers and different workloads housed in those providers, we know that in order to go farther, faster, you'll need to see your cloud in a totally different way. You'll need a way to get better context about what makes up your cloud based on your role. And you'll need to find what you're looking for quickly. Just like how cloud enablement is a paradigm shift to how you view your cloud, both literally and philosophically, this new feature is a paradigm shift to how you can view your cloud in Kion. And with that said, it gives me great pleasure to announce resource inventory. With resource inventory, you can see all of your resources across projects and OUs, as long as you have the permissions, of course. And this is really powerful because it gives you a new way to see which resources you're utilizing, how they're being utilized, and even some trends that you couldn't see any other way. I want to make a special note to thank all the team members who have contributed to this feature, and especially our design and engineering team who really, really 
uh, worked hard to make this feature possible. If we were in person, I'd pause for a second for a round of applause. We see this feature as a foundational component for us. To this point, Kion really has been working at the, uh, at the cloud level and above, and this moves us into working with individual resources. We want to deliver the context that Kion gives you about financials, uh, compliance, management, et cetera, that are found in other places in the tool into the individual resource level. Now, why would we do that? Well, one of the biggest reasons is that customers have been asking for it. Uh, customers would like to filter to view all the running EC2 instances, view total S3 bucket size, find where an EC2 instant lives, and more. And we've heard you loud and clear that part of the mundane grunt work that needs to be eliminated is all the time spent searching for exactly what you need. In a multi-cloud world, there could be an enormous number of resources in different cloud providers, which is why with resource inventory, you'll be able to search across cloud providers. You can search by resource ID, resource name, account number, public and elastic IP address, and more. And we've included powerful filters to ensure you can narrow your results down to exactly what you need. Want to only see resources running in US East? You can do that. You want to see all inactive Azure resources inside a specific, pro a specific project or OU? You can do that. Resource inventory also takes the first steps to bringing you the context you need at a resource level. Typically in Kion to find individual compliance findings or savings opportunities for resource, you go to the compliance dashboard or to savings opportunities and then drill down to the resource level. But in resource inventory, you find the resource you want. And from there you can view monthly spend, savings opportunities and compliance findings that are all associated to the individual resource. So this is just another way to go farther faster. And there's one more exciting tidbit that I wanna share with you about resource inventory. Resource inventory will be included with version 3.4, which is currently scheduled for a May release. We're really excited to get resource inventory into your hands and to learn how you'll use it and what, you can, and what we can do to make it even better, along with all the other features we'll be releasing in the future. Which is why, as I conclude, I would like to re-emphasize what John Hall shared earlier about how you can share your feedback with us uh, by submitting a ticket through the Kion Success Center, the Cloud Unity Slack channel, our in-app feature preview badge, and in person at the upcoming AWS Public Sector Summit in Washington, DC. Thank you, everyone. And with that, I'll turn it back to you, Matt. Appreciate it, Austin. Thank you so much for that in-depth overview. Before you go, uh, we got a couple questions coming in. I know Randy and some others are hitting up some details in Slack, but one of the big ones kind of generalized that came through was around uh, sort of what cloud, cloud providers would be supported by resource inventory at launch. Great question. So at launch, uh, the we'll be supporting AWS and Azure initially. 